kind of interesting, actually. We're finally going to invade Earth Rolls and Royce. take what is Next. ours. All the aliens grab your sword and run. Okay. Some of the world's most luxurious That's cars. That's kind of interesting, actually. Known for producing handcrafted automobiles that promise a seamless magical carpet ride for its customers, a Rolls Royce car does not come cheap. These are some of the best selling Rolls Royce models. And these are their entry level prices. But with virtually unlimited optional extras, upgrades, and customizations, the true cost of a bespoke Rolls Royce has different no different limits. I'm sorry happened to you then. In fact, Rolls Royce refuses to even discuss its base prices. There isn't really a specific base price which we would just discuss because it really depends on each customer as an individual and the bespoke options which they like to, to design and develop with our, with our bespoke team. So what are some of these bespoke extras? And is that what makes Rolls-Royce so expensive? It's kind One of, of the dumb. first obvious starting points probably is the colour. We have a palette of 44,000 plus colours. We replicate people's lipsticks, um, something from your house, something your own, something you've seen. Even we've done the dog of an owner, a red setter. So we exactly replicate them, whether it be by uh, the That's DNA, cool. the chemistry or whatever. For us, it's unique. It'll be registered as your colour and you can give it a name and it's yours. And if someone else has seen it and wants to use that exact finish, we have to go to that person and ask their permission. When we go to the paint shop, you'll see it's called the Surface Finish Centre because it's a bit of an insult to say, we're painting the car. It's more than that. You're going to have at least How's seven that a ha -ha? of is coat. That, that a ha -ha? There's primers, there's base coats, there's colour. And unusually, we put on two clear coats of lacquer. But you could have up to 23 chat, I'm gonna get out layers of, of coating, which we've done before. Hold on, chat. Let me get it to you. Normally, I don't mind like not watching it for like like a like 10 seconds whenever I go to get something to drink. But now I kind of want to watch this. Or equating to I about 45 it. kilograms in weight, just of coat. In addition to the endless variations of color. Rolls-Royce customers can infuse their paint with materials to create special effects. One particularly wealthy customer went one step further, requesting the addition of a thousand diamonds. We wanted well, a bit more dumb. sparkle in the finish, so it gave us a bag of diamonds. We crushed them, they were infused into the paint. Remarkably, the detailed paintwork on Rolls-Royce cars is done by hand by Wait. just one person. Hold up, chat. Hold up, chat. Isn't the whole point of diamonds over any other like material or whatever is that they reflect light more? So what what's the point of mixing it in fucking in paint and shit? Then there's no difference between that and some other shit that you can you could be putting into the same sort of finish. Right? My name is Mark Court and I am the coach liner for Rolls Royce Motor Club. It's just a flex. The coach liner means that I am able to put this pinstripe onto the side of the car. The uniqueness is the fact that I do it completely freehand, and I'm the only one within Rolls-Royce that can do this. That's like worldwide within the Rolls-Royce BMW group. So the brushes I use is made of squirrel hair. We found that most brushes nowadays are man-made, which tends to leave brush marks within these lines. This is a natural hair. This natural hair t tends to leave no marks at all. So we work to one standard, which is the highest standard. So we use one that leaves no brush marks at all. And if customers without a coach line decide to add one to their car, Mark is on hand to travel worldwide with his paintbrush. As normal, with Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce never comes back to us, we go to it. So if it's in Dubai, so be it. That's where I have to go. There are several unmistakable features of every Rolls-Royce exterior. Sure. The handmade Pantheon grille, the self-writing wheel centers that ensure the RR logo is never rotated, and the Spirit of Ecstasy ornament. In fact, in 2003, BMW paid $65 million to acquire the rights to the Rolls-Royce name, symbol, and the Spirit of Ecstasy. But it's inside the car where luxury and cost dramatically increases. To create a virtually silent ride, Rolls-Royce adds approximately 300 pounds of acoustic insulation around the cabin. Its tyre manufacturer, Continental, even developed special foam-filled tyres, which reduced the noise of the road by 9 decibels. The results were so profound that Rolls-Royce removed some soundproofing, 
to avoid causing acoustic sensory deprivation. Jesus! The dashboard of the Rolls-Royce Phantom can even become a bespoke art gallery. Customers have commissioned artists to produce all sorts of designs for this space, including this gold-plated, 3D-printed, stainless steel installation that replicates the customer's DNA profile. Okay. Another shining feature of Rolls-Royce is the Starlight Headliner, an intricate series of fiber-optic roof lights that recreate the night sky. It takes up to 16 hours to build the Starlight Headliners. We're starting by drilling it and we perforate every single uh, hole to thread fiber optic through every single um, hole. We've got up to 1,340 holes. We're doing this to achieve the stars yeah, that are on the sky, so we're going to have the sky in the night <laughs> covered with uh, stars. As with all things Rolls-Royce, customers cool. can create bespoke starlight designs, including randomly generated shooting stars. One customer even had their design matched to exactly replicate the constellation of stars from the night they were born. Okay. The embroidery on the upholstery is also tailor-made to the customer's design choice. So there's no real standard process that's repeated with embroidery just because every single design is completely unique to the customer. It's not just a case of scanning in an image, turning it into embroidery. Every single aspect of the image is thought out. The different angles of the stitch will reflect the light in a different way. So rather than it just being a flat image, we're trying to bring it out to that next level. So it's almost three-dimensional, like a hologram effect that you can get from our stitching. The most complex embroidery project Rolls-Royce has completed is this special Rose Phantom model, which consists of one million individual stitches. The Rose Phantom is the biggest embroidery we've done to date. We'll have to map out exactly what order we're putting all those embroideries guys, onto the leather is, so that they all join guys, up to match. Some of this shit is literally the, the Pepega Credit world record. That's some of the stitching is no tolerance. It Pepega can't be credit, by a millimeter, otherwise it's completely written off. Just take a small aspect of the Rose Phantom. It's a good example of the development of one of the butterflies. What seems relatively simple in like an image actually becomes very complex for embroidery. So for the Phantom Rose Headliner, there's a few techniques that we hadn't used before. Because of the, the scale of the Rose Headliner, uh, we had to break it down into individual elements. So each individual butterfly, the flower heads themselves, and then all That's the vines and leaves. Shit. So you can see here, it's basically different layering of different colored stitches in different densities. And by building those up, we can create that sort of fade effect where it's darker to the center, fades out towards the wings, fine tune them to the quality that we'd expect and then start combining it and bringing it all together. I got it, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. Rolls-Royce has seen a boom in sales oh over the last God. 10 years. In 2019, sales increased. Oh my God. Oh. Okay. Chat, hold up. I dropped the soy sauce on the floor, dude, and it broke. Hold up, chat. Oh, I fucking broke it. It's fine. Increased by roughly 25% to 5,152 uh -huh. units, with the average age of a Rolls Royce owner dropping from late 50s to mid 40s. Take Drake, for example. His Bashukan model, a special edition of the Phantom, left the factory at a value of about $700,000. However, the customizations that Drake made, such as the diamond encrusted Ovo Al in place of the Spirit of Ecstasy, is thought to have brought the overall price to about $1 million. The most expensive Rolls-Royce model ever built was the Sweptail. The result of over four years' work, 
this one-of-a-kind car was reported to cost $13 million, previously wow. holding the title of the world's most expensive new car. But while other top-end car manufacturers focus on speed, maneuverability, and super lightweight supercar status, Rolls-Royce cars are expensive for one reason. Luxury. Luxury. Huh. That was interesting though, dude. I kind of enjoyed that. Wait, that was actually a really good video. Wait, did they have that for other cars or other things in the world? This is Bugatti's new $18 million supercar. It's the most expensive new car in the world. And the bad news is that even if you had $18 million just lying around, you're out of luck because they've only made one and it's already been sold. Guys, I'm sorry. We are celebrating 110 years anniversary of Bugatti, but also 110 years anniversary of Jean Bugatti himself. Jean Bugatti, his masterpiece is obviously the Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic. It was painted in a very recognizable black and was called La Voiture Noire. So we took this as an inspiration. It is not a retro design. It is a modern day Bugatti using the spirit of the, the private car from Jean himself. The car has many of the same internals as the Bugatti Chiron and Devo including the massive 8-litre quad-turbocharged 16-cylinder engine with almost 1,500 horsepower. Understand today we have three cars. The first car is like a 3 million euro limited to 20 examples and it's a Chiron edition 110 anniversary. The second car is a 5 million euro car, it's limited to 40 units and it's a Bugatti Divo. And the last one, which basically I call it automobile haute couture, is limited to one single piece. This would be basically completely a one of one, 16.7 million euro one piece. So what is it that makes this design stand out so much? In order for a Bugatti to be recognizable, to be memorable, it has four elements. The first element is obviously the Bugatti horseshoe. The I can buy it. I already have it. The center line accentuation that flows through the whole car and is an obvious inspiration from the Type 57 Atlantic riveted dorsal sill. Obviously, the signature line from the side, which this time does not go only from the A post all the way down, but goes from the center of the car all the way to the fuel cap and That's all the cool. way to the horseshoe, cool. giving more. I love those rims, those look sick. Lens, giving more elegance to this car. And obviously, I call it the single beam uh, uh, tail light, but look amazing. Uh, also the Kiss Goodbye signature, and it's this straight line that is always on in the rear of the car. When you have those four elements, this is then you have a really recognizable Bugatti from every angle. Well, it's cool, but none of these cars are worth the, the fucking money. Right? Don't get me wrong. How about this? The watch comes in two different versions, um, and the difference between the two is pretty much restricted just to the case material. Uh, the $460,000 version is in uh, red gold, and uh, the more expensive half million dollar version uh, is done in platinum. Many of the most expensive watches are expensive because they're set with uh, precious stones, which of course raises the price through the roof. In the case of the recital 22 grand recital, however, uh, the watch is as expensive as it is entirely because of the amount of craftsmanship that goes into it and the length of time that it takes to produce the various effects that make the watch what it is. Uh, Beauvais watches are inherently limited in production simply because of the complexity that's associated with making them. Uh, this particular watch uh, is uh, a limited edition of 60 pieces worldwide. Uh, those are going to roll out very slowly uh, simply because they can't be made quickly. It's just uh, inherent in the nature of the watch. 
The single decorative element that's probably most strongly identified with Beauvais today is the use of extremely so fine It is actually painting, useless. Uh, often in the form of what's called cold enameling uh, on the dials of their watches. And uh, the uh, t Recital 22 Grand Recital uh, has a really, really wonderful example of uh, this particular craft. Uh, the centerpiece of the watch is a hemisphere representing the Earth as seen from above the North Pole. There are many, many layers of enamel that have, been that have been applied to the hemisphere in order to achieve a wonderful kind of translucent effect in which the clouds literally seem to float above the oceans and continents. The paints are actually uh, luminous and uh, very, very luminous. And uh, when you turn the lights off, you are but treated why? to a view of the continents uh, glowing up at you that's just incredibly compelling. Uh, this particular wristwatch is uh, in a class of what are called astronomical complications. These are timepieces that show often the relative position of the stars to an observer standing on Earth, or in this case, the relative position of the sun and the moon relative to an observer standing on Earth. So the centerpiece is this revolving, hand-painted depiction of the uh, uh, upper hemisphere, the northern hemisphere of the Earth. Uh, placed just below it in the six o'clock position is what's called a tourbillon. Uh, we can see the tourbillon rotating as we uh, look at the watch, and the position that it's in is identical to the position that the sun would be in uh, relative to the Earth. So it kind okay, of stands in for, the tourbillon stands in for the sun in this wristwatch. Rotating around the Earth just look is up. a spherical depiction of the moon uh, divided into a, a sunlit hemisphere and a dark hemisphere. And uh, you can read the phase of the moon from the position of this little hemisphere as it rotates around the Earth. The back of the watch is also loaded with information. It's what's called the perpetual calendar. Now, a perpetual calendar is a mechanical watch which knows the difference between a leap year and a non-leap year, and which also advances the date correctly at the end of each month, whether it's a 30-day month or a 31-day month. The relative rarity of the watches and the amount of handwork that goes into finishing the movement, the case, and other aspects of the watch okay. all adds up to a tremendous, tremendous amount of real old-school craftsmanship, which simply doesn't come cheap. At this level of watchmaking, you're really talking about uh, something that's designed to appeal to someone with extremely specific tastes and with a budget to match. There are 705 components in this wristwatch. Cool, man. Okay, I'm nervous.